in the markets, uh, WebGL based. Um, we have a big community of over two million people uh, right now. Uh, we have a store that I will talk a bit about as well. And we have a lot of really, really cool content. And so instead of showing slides, <clears throat> what I will be doing is I'll be showing you everything on the site. Uh, so there's a lot of nice examples here as well. So first thing I feel I need to tell you about is that we have, oh, let me hide this, we have uh, a Blender plugin that connects straight to our platform. And it does two things. It lets you upload your Blender scenes to Sketchfab. So you, you log in with your account, you hit the upload button, and it will pack everything it needs into your file and, and publish it uh, so it's ready for use. But it also downloads content. So you can browse our entire Creative Commons li uh, library with over 200,000 models right now, I think, yeah, something. Um, and you can just browse it, import it into your scene, and work with it, etc. Um, if you are a pro user, it can also browse your, your personal uh, portfolio. So everything you have uploaded to Sketchfab, you can easily bring back into uh, your scene as well. And to give you an example, uh, I will be... Ooh, something is kind of... Ah, I have to activate it. Let's search for a model like a car, for example. I can browse all the models, and I know a few of them are a bit heavy, so I know this one is going to work. It gives you some statistics. It says, okay, it's uh, 1,600 faces or vertices, uh, some texture maps, not animated. It will show you the uh, Creative Commons license as well. I think we're planning to store that information in your blend file. So if you download 20 Creative Commons models, it, has no, it will have notes at some point saying, okay, this model is by this artist with this link. So it makes it easier to attribute them later in your projects as well. And so now, boom, I have the, the model in my file, and we have taken care to link everything to an empty, so it's easy to, uh, to manipulate. And it brought in all the texture maps and set up the, the shaders, etc., correctly, so now I have a nice model here. Um, I wanted to show a little bit more about this, but given the fact that I only have 13 minutes left, I'm going to be <laughs> a bit faster. Um, but this is super useful. So you have a very nice connector uh, leading you to hundreds of thousands of free, uh, free models. Uh, we're 2.8 compatible, uh, so you can upload all your files. For 2.8, we're still working on some features like animation. Uh, there are some complexities there that we need to solve. But within a month, that should be better, I think. Um, alternatively, you can also just drag and drop any file into our website and it will upload it as well. So you don't need to use this software, you can just upload a blend file straight away. That will work just as well. Cool. Now, for some of the features I wanted to talk about. Um, very often we see models like this on our, uh, on our sites, and it's a cool model, but it's kind of floating, right? And if you, uh, if you investigate it and you're, you're looking around, it doesn't have a ground, which makes it very awkward. Um, this makes sense for a lot of artists because they want to share just the asset or a prop, like a chair or a table or whatever, and they don't want to have to model uh, a ground, etc. So recently we added a feature called Ground Shadows, which will just add it for you. It allows you to change a lot of the settings, like tweak the height, tweak the fall off, tweak the size for performance reasons, etc. Um, as you notice, this is a real-time shadow, so it works for, the, for animated models. If, however, you have a static model, I'm going to close some stuff to make it faster. Like this is a nice uh, 3D scanned motorcycle. On a static model, I can also enable baked ambient occlusion maps. And you see it's a very nice and subtle effect here. And I can recompute it by changing the height a little bit. And you see this little bar? It's actually rendering this in your browser. And as soon as it's done, it will upload the AO map back into your scene. So it's, uh, it's available for display as well. And this gives a lot more, it really grounds your, your models, right? It gives it more, more mass and it feels much more realistic like that. And we're now, right now we're trying to decide if we should make this a default feature or not, because for 90% of the models it makes sense to add ground shadows, and for 10% it does not. And so what do we want to do there? We, we're not sure yet. Um, another feature is the light rotation. And so you, you might be used to watching uh, models on Sketchfab and sometimes there's a part that you just can't see because the light doesn't reach it or something. If you hold down the Alt key or on your phone if you swipe with three fingers, you can rotate the light setup in your, uh, in your browser. You can also do this in the 3D editor. You'll actually see the lights rotate in your scene. 
and you can save your setup if you're, if you're happy with it. So this can really help you accurately light your scene as well and say, well, I want to have a specific type of shadow. We have some SSS going on here as well, by the way. And now I could save it with this light information. There's an alternative version of this. If you hold down the Shift key as well, it will not rotate the environment. So you could be selective about what you want to change in your, in your scene. I have another one. Oh, no, that's it. Next feature <coughs> is the ability to center the camera around any point that you want. So in this scene, maybe you want to take a better look at this uh, orange thing here. You can just double click on it to place the camera center there, and now I can rotate around this part, or maybe I want to see this. Now I can rotate around this bit. And it's simple, but it really helps you if you're, you're setting up your model after you've uploaded it to Sketchfab. You make sure that the camera is properly centered, and it's going to make it much easier for other people to investigate your, your scene, right? Because otherwise, it, if you rotate it, it goes straight out of the view, and it makes it really hard. Um, so yeah, please do pay attention to that when you upload a model. Next up, model inspector. Uh, it is here in plain view, but still a lot of people don't see it. If you click the model inspector, it allows you to uh, take a deep dive into your scene. So this model consists of like uh, several texture maps, and I can see the effect that they have on the, on the render. So you can really check out everything. You can take a look at the, at the map, mat cap. You can take a look at the combination of the mat cap and the normal maps. You can take a look at the wireframe. And so what we find is that there's a lot of art students who use Sketchfab, and they use this feature primarily to understand how a model is constructed. So they don't even bother downloading it anymore and opening it in Blender, for example, which is what they did before. But now they just stay on the site and they, they look at how it works. You can also enable the 2D view. So let's say I want to know more about the, <coughs> uh, the color map. I can now investigate how it works, and I can see which part of the UV map corresponds to the model. Just click on the material here, and you can really understand how it works. And you can zoom in and out and get a really clear look at it as well. Something else that the inspector does for animated models, like this one, Hang on, I'm going to load it again. I didn't finish. Yeah, there you go. You can also take a look at the bones, like how this model is animated, and at their influence. So they're all color-coded. Each bone corresponds to a certain area. Now, it's good to understand that this is an estimation. When we read 3D data, our bones only contain the root of the bone and not the end of the bone. So we have to be we have to do an, like a guess as to like where does this bone end. But typically, it's fairly, fairly accurate. Then, all the things I just used in the inspector are also accessible by hotkeys. And to see the hotkeys, hang on, you want to click on the question mark here, and then go to all controls, and you get the full list of available gestures and hotkeys and everything uh, right here. And for example, if I hit one, I will just see the unpost-processed work. So there's no filters, no, no special effects applied or anything. If I hit two, I can cycle through all the material maps here. If I hit three, I will see the model in uh, matcap, wireframe, vertex normals. I can see the UV mapping. And I forgot what five is. Oh, five is the wireframe view. So whenever you're on Sketchfab, if you hit five, it will straight away show you the, the wireframe without even going into the material, into the inspector, right? So it will work just like that. So <clears throat> super useful, useful stuff if you want to learn more about how models are done. Uh, you should definitely look into that. And remember the question mark key. There's a lot of good stuff here, even if we could be a bit, a bit better about exposing it. Then the next well-hidden secret is our labs page. So this is where we like to tinker and build stuff that we're not really sure will make it into the product. Uh, typically, our developers have one Friday every two weeks to do whatever they like, and they build experiments. And that, these end up on this page. And the one I wanted to highlight, and it's worth going through it because there's a lot of interesting stuff, and you can look at the source to see how it's done. But the one I wanted to highlight here is the screenshots tool. 
which basically allows you to take a render. So, uh, I don't know, I want to see a dinosaur. That is not a great idea because this is super heavy. Hang on. Fish. That's better. So now I can frame it any way I want. I can render up to 4K in this uh, view. And then you just hit the export screenshot and you have your still image saved on your computer. And this is very useful. I, I, like even today, someone told me he was taking screenshots of Sketchfab uh, of the browser to use it in, all, in his portfolio. But please use this tool because it's going to be a lot better. <laughs> Um, and also, like, as I just said, all these experiments on the labs page, they are, uh, you can see how they're made, and that is because they're using our viewer API. We have a JavaScript library that can connect to our viewer, and that allows you to extend the functionality. And um, you can find the full information about that on our developers page. So if you go to sketchfab.com slash developers, you will find all kinds of documentation. Not just viewer API, by the way. We also have a data API and a download API. So there's a lot of stuff. If you like hacking, just take a look at, at this page. It will be good. But for viewers specifically, we have a page that has a lot of examples. So if, let's say I want to have, I want to build a page where I can hide part of a model while the Sketchfab model is being shown. Um, here's an example. I can say uh, hide this part here or show it. Very simple, of course, but it's for uh, documentation purposes. If you scroll down, you can actually see how it's being done. It says, well, this is object ID 191. And if you click the hide button, then we tell the API to hide that object, or we tell the API to show that object. Right. This is not a very complex example, but you, you get the idea. You can make much more complex things with this. And uh, our functionality is expanding all the time. We're getting ready for a new release now that allows you to customize the annotations a lot. So you can have little markup in your models that explain features or allow navigation. Um, and that will be supercharged in our next API release as well. Um, an example of this is what we call product configurators. So we work with uh, companies as well. We, we connect companies to API developers in our community to develop uh, configurators, for example. And this is one that we recently did. It's a, it's a fashion company that creates these clothes. And in this configurator, you can click on a part of the clothing, like the upper ring here, and say, OK, I want to have a different color. And then they integrated it into their e-commerce platform so that you can actually order this thing. And it will be, made, will be custom made for you exactly this way. And we have examples of uh, companies like Zodiac, where you can customize your your speedboat with all kinds of like, a, does it need a fridge? Does it need to have a, a sunroof on it? Whatever. And it shows you the price in real time and you can explore your, your product. Uh, we have uh, solar panel companies that do it. Uh, shoes uh, configuration is really becoming a very powerful e-commerce product at this time. Another technical thing which is not, uh, oh, did I not open it? Oh, there is. <clears throat> uh, for the API developers, we have started a community um, where you can find all the information that you need. We, every month, we showcase new products for inspiration. We highlight new uh, community members as well. So we talk a bit about them, how they like to run their projects, uh, and how they work. Um, and we keep you informed of our upcoming developments as well, which is very useful if you're working with a client and they ask you questions. It's good to know where we are heading as a platform, right? So you can kind of like prepare for that. Uh, it's relatively small, well, small, it's, it's three and a half thousand people. Uh, they have a monthly newsletter and a dedicated forum where our own developers are active as well. So if you have very specialist questions, you can ask them here and usually you get an answer within a day or so. The last feature I wanted to talk about is URL parameters. It does not sound as sexy as JavaScript uh, viewer API, but you can do a lot of really cool stuff with it. So there's all these hidden features that you can activate by just adding a parameter to the URL of your model. Uh, like you can uh, decide if you want to have annotations or not. You want to, like what we call an autopilot, you can browse through annotations. So without the user doing anything, it will go from viewpoint to viewpoint and slowly explore the model for them. 
Uh, you can set auto spin. I will I will show you this in a bit. It's, it's a nice one. Should an embed automatically start? Like if you put it on your page, should it play immediately or not? Well, um, I could read them all, but as you see, it's it's quite a bit. Um, and if you need any specific kind of feature, usually the answer is yep, we have that. You know, just look at this page, and you could use it. And to give you an idea of the auto spin, because that's I, I'm showing that because it's the most used uh, feature. Uh, just find a nice model here. This little car. So typically, if a Sketchfab model loads, it just sits there, right? You need to, to interact with it to, to explore it. And then we see some people who actually animate it on a turntable. So they upload a turntable animation to Sketchfab, which is really annoying because then you want to explore this rotating model and it, it rotates away under your mouse all the time. So a better way to, to share that on your website or social media is to add auto spin equals some speed. And now it will just slowly turn, turn around and be your, your, your turntable model. As soon as you grab it, it stops, so you have time to uh, explore it. And then after one or two seconds, it will start going again. Boop, boop. Not as sexy as JavaScript, but very easy. It's, uh... OK. Um, last thing I wanted to touch on is our store. So I'm not sure if everyone's aware, but you can now uh, buy models on Sketchfab, you can sell models on Sketchfab. We have a lot of sellers who are uh, starting to make some real good money on it as well. Um, the question I always get is, well, what is the difference between free downloads and store downloads, right? Because we have, as I just said, over 200,000 freely downloadable commercial uh, uh, Creative Commons models, but also we have a store, so why would you bother? Well, the thing is, with Creative Commons, um, we always have the attribution uh, requirements. So if you download something, you need to give that artist attribution. Uh, there's often a non-commercial clause as well, so that kind of depends on which model you download. Um, and for many projects, this is great, right? If you do something personal or for your education, uh, or if you are able to give attribution, that's no problem at all. However, if you work for a movie studio or you create a commercial for television or, I don't know, any kind of use case where you're not able to provide attribution or you choose not to, then you can get uh, models from our store as well. Um, we take care to select only quality content. So if people apply as a seller, we, we check the portfolio and we say, okay, do we feel that this adds value? Is this good enough to sell? Is it reasonable to sell? Because some content is really cool, but it's not useful for your own projects, right? Um, so we, we try to really build on having a good library of uh, models here. And uh, I'm happy to say that we have a lot of Blender artists on board as well. And if you're interested in, in joining us, you can go to, to our store page. There's a sign-up form or come see me upstairs. We have a little booth where we show Sketchfab. Uh, and I'm happy to show you how things work and how you can sign up as a seller on our platform as well. That's it. Only two minutes over time. <laughs>